Fox News refuses to cover this story. Yesterday in Arizona, we saw 18 people indicted by a grand jury for this false elector scheme, this Republican plot to circumvent the will of the American people by using their own fake slate of electors. And this indictment included very familiar names like Rudy Giuliani, Jenna Ellis, Trump's chief of staff, Mark Meadows, even John Eastman, the lawyer who came up with this unconstitutional theory that Mike Pence could unilaterally decide the results of the election. But Aaron Rupar tweeted, transcript searches indicate that Fox News has not mentioned the new Arizona indictments of Giuliani and Mark Meadows a single time yet. And this was about eight hours after we learned the news about the indictments. So Fox News has gone from straight up lying to their audience to something they've always done, which is selectively choosing what stories to cover. They're still shaking up from this Dominion lawsuit, so rather than just lie about this story, why not just selectively cover pieces of other stories and skirt your way around one of the biggest stories of the day? But one of the funniest tweets, well, not funny, but ironic tweets came from Liz Cheney that said, this tells you all you need to know about today's Republican National Committee. The person in charge of election integrity for the GOP was just indicted in Arizona for lack of election integrity. That's right. The RNC chose Christina Bob for their head of election integrity. Caitlin Collins says Christina Bob, the Trump attorney who was just indicted in the Arizona fake elector scheme, was recently named as a senior counsel for election integrity for the RNC. By election integrity, they mean coming up with creative and dumb ways to, again, skirt the norms, circumvent the will of the American people, and get their own candidate into office by any means possible. Republicans do not actually care about election integrity. We've seen this time and time again. They care about suppressing votes in any way they can. When you hear Republicans crying about voter ID in certain states, just know the case that they're commonly referring to is from North Carolina, and it says in July 2016, a federal appeals court struck down several portions of a 2013 North Carolina elections law that included a voter ID mandate, saying GOP lawmakers had them written with almost surgical precision to discourage voting by black voters who tend to support Democrats. Over and over, we see this pattern of Republicans trying to suppress people's votes, whether they're minorities or whether it's the vote of an entire state by using their own fake slate of electors. What was Arizona's law about traitors in the 1860s? Because they had to go back 150 years to figure out how to treat women who want an abortion. They should apply this same standard here. But what blows my mind about this this case is just the irony. It's dripping idiocy from the people involved. First of all, we have this video of Kelly Ward screaming on stage saying, I want to see arrests. I want to see perp walks for people trying to interfere with the results of the election. Play this clip. I want to see arrests. I want to see perp walks. I want to see people in jail for stealing this election. I have a feeling you will, Kelly Ward, because now we have a video of her sitting at a table with all of the other fake electors as they walk through, step by step, the crime that they are committing in the moment. Play this clip. This is the certificate of the votes and the 2020 electors from Arizona, with the undersigned being the duly elected and qualified electors for the president and vice president of the United States of America from the state of Arizona to hereby certify the following. A, that we convene and organized in the city of Phoenix, County of Maricopa, state of Arizona at 12 noon on the 14th day of December 2020 to perform the duties enjoined upon us. Um, Donald J. Trump of the state of Florida, number of votes 11. For Vice President Michael R. Pence of the state of Indiana, number of votes 11. It's really easy to clap in the moment when you think you're on top of the world, but as we've seen before, it's not as fun when you're going through the courts and the legal process because you're in major, major trouble. Remember when Jenna Ellis was all happy after the election, but then when she was actually in court, she broke down in tears. Play this clip. They are very seriously, and I endeavor to be a person of sound moral and ethical character in all of my dealings. In the wake of the 2020 presidential election, 
I believed that challenging the results on behalf of President Trump should be pursued in a just and legal way. I endeavored to represent my client to the best of my ability. I relied on others, including lawyers with many more years of experience than I. And then, of course, we saw her throw her colleagues under the bus by saying she was relying on lawyers with many more years of experience than her. She was saying, I'm just a kid. I was tricked into doing this. And this could be an argument used by the people sitting around that table certifying the fake results in the clip I played just a minute ago. Now, those people sitting around that table could make the argument that they were tricked into doing this. They didn't know exactly what they were doing except we have text messages showing the intention, that mens rea piece, which is always very hard to prove. It's hard to prove that people were in the state of mind of committing a crime. They intentionally committed this crime, but in the indictments we see, it says on December 13th, the defendant asked the senior campaign advisor for an update on what was going on with the elector plan and directed him to put out a statement on electors. As a result, co-conspirator one directed the senior campaign advisor to join a conference call with him, co-conspirator six, and others. When the senior campaign advisor related these developments and the text messages to the deputy campaign manager, a senior advisor to the defendant, and a campaign staffer, the deputy campaign manager responded, here's the thing, the way this has morphed, it's a crazy play, so I don't know who wants to put their name on it. The senior advisor wrote, certifying illegal votes. They admit right there in text messages, not only that this is a crazy play, this is unprecedented, they also say they are certifying illegal votes. These people are so dumb they can't even commit crimes properly. Now, around the time of the Iowa caucuses, I was out there talking to voters, like Trump voters and undecided voters on all of these hot button political issues, and I met this guy who is a Trump voter or an ex-Trump voter voter, as he says, and I talked to him about this false elector scheme, and I kind of inch him over to our position of realizing that Trump is a threat to democracy. If you made it this far in the video, leave a like and comment a blue heart. Let's play this clip of this Trump voter. I was a Trumper, but I think it's time to change. I, I'm just kind of tired of his attitude. I think he's in it for himself. What do you think about Donald Trump being charged with conspiracy to defraud the United States? I personally think it's a witch hunt. You if, think so? Yeah. I think they're just, they'll do anything to get rid of him because they don't like him. Do you know what he's being accused of exactly? Well, conspiracy. Basically what they're accusing him of is gathering fake electors to try to certify the results oh. in his favor in multiple states. He also called Georgia asking him to flip the results of the election. Right. Do you think there's any truth in that? You did say he's I, all for himself. So. I, th I, think he would, I think he probably did so in if a he, roundabout way. So if he did it, then don't you think he should be prosecuted? Well, if they have if they have proof, yes. So it's not quite a witch hunt. They're just trying to like, gather the proof and stuff, basically. Right. Interesting. Are you a fan of Mike Pence? No. Why not? Because he was with Donald Trump, and I think he's unloyal. You think he's unloyal to Donald Trump? Yeah. In what way? I think I think he's just now that he's away, he's bad mouth, and you know why didn't he do something while he was in there? Well, what Donald Trump wanted him to do was overturn the results of a democratic election. And he keeps saying over there, he put the Constitution over Trump. So don't you think that's a smart thing to do? Wouldn't you prioritize the Constitution over Trump? Yes, I would. The Constitution comes first. So when Trump asked Pence to override the results of the election... He you, was wrong. Trump was wrong? I believe so, yes. Interesting. So you can understand why he's bad-mouthing him now. He's trying to set the precedent that Trump isn't someone who should be in office. That's right, yeah. Interesting. And we